share your screen with your audience. No. Why would I want to do such a thing? Hey, it's me and me right now. Okay, we're going to treat this like regular, regular video, kids, because what happened was I wasn't able to upload. Like, I like to upload. I wasn't able to upload my Vlogmas today because um, of reasons, whatever, but I just couldn't do it. And I have been meaning to do this, like, massive book haul and a review of the books that I read for this month. And I haven't been able to do that. So I feel like now is a really good time to do it. So that's what we're going to do. And then you can just watch this later if you're interested in the book stuff. So... Let me see. Let me open it up on my phone. Make sure all is well. Yep. Okay. That's me. Comments are not supported on private videos. Is it private? Is this private? Is this a private video? Is that why I'm the only one here? <laughs> Hold on. Hey, big boy. Webcam. Oh my gosh, it is private. Why would I have it private? Is that not the dumbest thing ever? Oh my gosh. Did I literally though? I had it set to private. Got it. Why would I set it to private? It's stupid. Just shows how good I am at this. Crash, not your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie doozle. Hi. Okay, apparently I had the video on private, which is a good reason for only me to have been here. And then at one point there were zero people here and I was like, wait a second, where did I go? Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hi everyone. <laughs> Look at the first two minutes of this are gonna be weird. But I wasn't able to get my Vlogmas video up today because of some like scheduling issues basically, but the video was done, it was ready to go. I even have tomorrow's done and ready to go, but yada, 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 who cares, right? I just thought it would be fun to do my little reading wrap up in my book haul and I would just do it live because these don't need to be heavily edited and then that way I'm not really missing a day and we're going to make this more fun because I'm here, I'm live and the idea is to get through the books but you know, if we get off topic, we get off topic, pals. So um, <laughs> let's lotion up. Everyone put your lotion on, okay? Because we're some dry guys. Fresh cream, warm cashmere. If you know, you know. And what there is to know is that they sent me that last week and I like cannot stop putting it on because it's just, it's lovely. It's the new silicone glove. If you guys remember silicone glove from uh, Avon back in the day, a classic, an absolute classic. Hey, you guys like my shirt? Bobby Hill. Dang it, Bobby. I can't show you the bottom, but it says that boy ain't right. So funny. I was going to suggest a live as a vlogmas. Yes. Okay. So good suggestion. Um, okay. I am going to go through these books. I'm not going to go through them like, you know, I'm not going to like deep dive into them here. But like I said, if we get distracted, we get distracted. But I'm just going to tell you the books that I read like in the last, I don't know, five or six weeks, six, seven weeks, maybe. Currently, I'm in the middle of this one, which is like the smuttiest freaking book. This came out back in like um, the Fifty Shades era. And it's called Bear Do You by Sylvia Day. And I picked this up at a used bookstore, like, I don't know, earlier this year. And I loved it. I loved all five. I feel like this is back when they used to actually follow the same couple for many, many, many books. And now I feel like every uh, series doesn't follow the same couple. Now they follow different couples from the same story. And it's just not the same. I want five books worth of whoever you are. So this one's Gideon and Eva. And it's a real, it's a real mighty good time. But this is like, if you ever read Fifty Shades, this is like a thousand times better. Um, but it was during that era. So you would see a lot of, you know, like billionaire romance kind of thing, a little, little kink in there. <laughs> it is what it is. Bear D with my cat blanket. And that's okay. Cause I'm not going to like get rid of my blankets. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, right. I get attached to characters too. And Bear 2 was such a good series. And I'm going to tell you why I picked it up to begin with in a minute. But the other book I read was one that everybody and their mom is like talking about. And it's the seven year slip. 
and I thought it was cool. The book is like this this girl who gets this, she inherits this apartment, and then inside the apartment is a man, and that man is living seven years in the past, hence the seven-year slip. And I did think it was super interesting. It was really easy to get through. And I liked how they worked it out because like they were living in different timelines, but it did work out in the end. And I don't know, it was different. So if you haven't read it and you're thinking about it, it was interesting. It was easy to get through and it was different, but I wasn't like swooning or anything. I really haven't been swooning this year and it's making me very sad. Okay. Cause I want, I want a swoon worthy like romance. You know what I mean? And if I can't get it, I at least want somebody to die. So then I read, uh, I read The Housemaid's Secret, which I have the original one, which is right back here, The Housemaid. Housemaid's Secret is the second one. Here's what I'm going to say about this. Frida McFadden, she does a good job. Her books are really easy to read, really easy to get through, um, entertaining. I love the pace. Just easy breezy, beautiful cover girl, okay? Super duper duper easy. The thing is, to me, these were nearly identical books. Like, I obviously I read this one first and then this was the next one and we were following the same purse the same like kind of main person but like because of this one and the shock of it I wasn't shocked here this was not shocking to me I feel like read one or the other don't read them both and if you're gonna read one or the other read this one yeah but you do not need to read both of these because Freedom McFadden has other books I've read many of her books Read one of the other books. They're better. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> wait, what happened? Hold on. Let me get let me get up in here a little bit. I want I gotta see what you guys are talking about. Uh, I don't know what that means. Okay. The lake house. I bought that for Nala. I hope it's like appropriate because it's been sitting in her room forever. Don't be weird in the chat. Yeah, don't be weird in the chat, guys. Oh, it sounds like the lake house. That's what you said. Okay. I didn't like the housemaid either. I think I'm too critical. <laughs> I don't I don't think that her books are like, oh my gosh. I always feel like she could have done a little bit better. Like I couldn't have done better because I don't write books like that. But I think that like she could have, you know what I mean? And you know who does do it a little bit better is a couple of people. But one of them is Karen Slaughter, man. Karen Slaughter. I don't know what she's drinking, but. It's a wonderful time when she gets to drink and whatever it is. Um, and who else? Not Megan Golden, not Lucy Foley. It was somebody else. Oh, Simone St. James. Damn, Simone St. James is on one. Although you have to like, I don't know, like you have to be open to like paranormal kind of stuff because her stuff is always a little bit beyond reality, okay? Okay. Anyway. Moving on, <laughs> bringing down the Duke. This is one of those books that has literally been sitting on my shelf since September of 2019. And I was really trying to get it off. Um, I was really trying to get it off. And I finally did. And it was fine. But like, if you want an old school romance, I would just read Bridgerton. I just feel like they did it. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Please use it for both. Okay. Hi, Amy. Thank you. That was really unnecessary, though. Please use for books for Anna J. I will treat them to a trip to Barnes and Noble or what's the other one? Anderson's very soon. Crazy. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> you threw me off my game there. So, yeah, no, if I was going to read something like this, like a really, you know, I don't know if these are called Regency romances, but I would just read Bridgerton, to be honest with you. I thought that it was a lot better, uh, more entertaining. And I, I don't know. I didn't love the storyline here. And I just it took a long time and I wasn't really in love with it or anything like that. Uh, and then I also picked up or I also read Riley Sager's The Only One Left. I've had like a love hate relationship with Riley Sager. I loved Home Before Dark, but I also think it's because it was the first Riley Sager book I read, and I was pretty fresh on thrillers. I hadn't read a ton of thrillers, and now that I've read a lot of thrillers, I think looking back, it's not quite as good as I thought it was, but it's still my favorite Riley Sager book to date, and I hated the last two books he wrote, but this one I actually thought wasn't bad. It 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 wasn't horrible. Um, Hold on. Hi, the user on this channel. Okay. 
I hit Jacob. I don't know anything that he said because everything's redacted, but you're all saying he's horrible. So I'm going to go with what you said. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought this was one of his better books lately and it's, uh, it's, it was good. It was, it's a thriller sort of, but like the way that it all worked out in the end, I liked that. I liked how it ended up finishing up. Okay. I don't do a whole lot of synopsis here because I, you know, you can do that. I don't want to read it to you, <laughs> but look at this honking fatty of a book. Look at this big, thick boy. Okay. He's a boy. This is a boy. This is not a girl. Wellness by Nathan Hill. I didn't know what to think of this. It was one of the book of the month picks for October. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to go into this without knowing anything. And this was one of those books. Oh, okay. Have any of you guys, I'm sure some of you have, have you guys seen um, have you guys seen the movie? I think it's called Divorce. And it has like old dude, the 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 pale guy with the dark hair, Adam Driver? Adam Driver? Mini Driver? Are they related? Adam Driver. And the girl. Um what it's not Natalie Portman, it's the other girl, the one who's like also a superhero. Oh my gosh, what is her name? I don't know. Okay. But if you've seen, yes, Scarlett Johansson. Marriage. <laughs> Is it called marriage? <laughs> I called it divorce. Um, my bad. Okay. Uh, so if you've ever seen, yes, that Netflix movie, if you've ever seen it and how that is like this sort of, it's like you're in their relationship and it's incredibly real. Oh, it also kind of reminds me of that movie with Zendaya and Denzel's son. I forgot his name too. David. Um, it reminds me of that as well, where you're like inside of their relationship down to them arguing about curtains. You know what I mean? Like you're so inside of it, inside of every argument and everything else. And it's very, <laughs> yeah, oh God, sorry. it's, it's just, it's just, if you're into that, this book is going to be for you. It was a really interesting read, but I will say there were some parts where, oh my gosh, I also hated Fix Her Up. Like, I, I don't like Tessa Bailey's writing overall. I'm just going to say that. But, um, I mean, I think at the time I wasn't so harsh on it, but like, I don't like Tessa Bailey's writing. But this book was just like that. So if you like being all up in somebody's business and you don't mind him going on and on and on and on. It was like, oh, this has a backstory and this backstory has a backstory and this backstory has a backstory. And dude was like, I'm going to take you through every single part of every single story. And that's why that book is a thousand years long. Uh, I was very entertained, though. I didn't physically read that, though. There was no way. There was no way. That was an audible read. And I think I read it while I was putting up my Christmas tree. So it was a very jolly experience, if you will. I didn't like Tessa Bailey either. It's not, it's like, I don't even know how to explain them. There are certain book lessons in chemistry was a good book. I highly agree with that. There are certain authors who are super surface level to me and they don't, I never care about the relationship. Like there's no depth ever to the relationships. And I feel like it's almost like a, it's not a waste, but it's like, they're all the same. It's all the same. It's the same formula. It's the same everything. Tessa Bailey is one of those authors to me. Another one is, what's her name? She writes a billion books, Jasmine Guillory. Her books are just like that to me too. And they're not good and they're not bad, but they're just very forgettable. They all just, you know what I mean? They all just run together. So they're fine, but I was trying to explain to Nala. What was I saying? Um, she was talking about how her, uh, she was talking about something, but she was talking about Colleen Hoover, right? And Colleen Hoover books and how yada, yada. We had gotten on the subject somehow. And um, she's like, do you like them or do you think they're bad? And I was like, they're fine. Um, I understand why some people are absolutely obsessed with them. I said, and I was trying to explain to her that I was, I was feeding her this horrible concha that I made, if you guys were around, and it did not taste very good. But it had sugar and it had fat. And so it was okay, but it didn't taste very good. And I was like, imagine if this was the only time that you had ever, like this was the only sweet you had ever tried. It's probably solid. You'd probably be happy with this. This is probably a good time. But now imagine that you had tasted cookies and cakes and cheesecakes and ice cream and every. Now imagine you've tasted all of that. Where does this rank, basically? 
And she's like, well, it's not going to rank very high if I've tasted all of that. And I said, that's what it's like when you read certain books. If you've only had a little taste of that genre, you've only had a little taste and then you really get to experience, you know what I'm saying? Like all you've had is that one crusty, broken up graham cracker. And now you get to experience like, what? what is it? What is a creme brulee? What is that? Like, it's different. You know what I'm saying? So I don't hate on people for liking what they like. But I'm just saying, like, once you really get a taste and you have the, you see the flavors of the world. OK, well, now that's not as impressive as I thought it was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> OK. But anyway, um, moving on. Catherine Center. I've read a few of her books now. And her books are really, like, women's. I, I think they're classified as women's um, chiclet. Like, What's it called? Literary fiction? It's not really literary fiction, but they're also really not romance. But this one was really interesting. It was this chick who, um, she was in an airplane crash and her boyfriend was the pilot. And right before they crashed, he asked her to be his wife and then they crash. And then she like loses the use of her legs and she's paralyzed at this point. And you follow her from that moment, from that moment on, you follow her and you know going through rehab being in the hospital and da 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 and Catherine Center just does a really good job of putting you in that person's head and like in those moments and there's always a romance if you will but it's not you're not being swept away by it this is like how real life romance happens in my opinion right like you're in a dark situation and then you meet someone and and they're you know now you guys are together this, this to me feels more real, like the real way a relationship would unfold, basically. I've never used Audible. Say what? No, I have not read Fourth Wing. My taste is so far from mainstream that it isn't funny. Yeah, I try to have pretty... Um, <gasps> Did you know that you could take a screenshot if you click the button on your watch? Oh, no, you can't. I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> Never mind. I'm just like, my, my stuff is pretty mainstream-ish um, for the most part. I do get into some other books. I have some stuff up here that definitely no one is talking about. But yeah, I, I like to read so that I can talk to people about it. I saw someone post today and they said that seeing another person reading a book you like is like the book recommending that person to you. And I was like... Yeah. So then I started thinking about certain books. I'm like, if I was out and I saw somebody reading like this one, like Aletha Romeg book or whatever, like these more obscure books that like people are not like chatting about on TikTok, you know what I'm saying? I would be like, oh, is this real life? Like, do I officially have a human being to discuss this book with? Because I've been thinking about it for the last nine years and I want to know your thoughts. Yeah. And I did that la this month, actually. Uh, we did our book club and I, it was my pick. So I picked American Cycle by Brett Easton Ellis, which is not for the faint of heart. I talked about it last year, but, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was, it's not for the faint of heart. A lot of people couldn't make it all the way through it. It is really graphic. It's really disgusting. There's a lot of on, on page, everything. He's killing everybody. He's hurting everybody. He's doing really, really, really foul things. And he's just so casual about it. Um, but I read it and I was like, I must discuss this with someone. And so I made it our book club book and then we went and we talked about it and it was like such a good, it was, it was so great. It was like a wonderful conversation. Um, mostly just with my one brother. I just read the push. Did you love it? I love the push. That was like, one of my, that was probably my favorite read last year. That's how I felt when you mentioned manacles. I want to read that really bad. And it's like, it's going to happen because I just rewatched all of my, uh, all the Harry Potter movies. And I'm like, all right, I feel like I'm ready for this. P.S. If any of you ever read Harry Potter fan fiction, this is going to be very niche. There was an author named, I think her name was Rogue Suga, like S-U-G-A-H, Rogue, like R-U-G-U-E, Rogue Suga, I think. And she started writing her fanfic called The Price of Love. Uh, in between the fifth and sixth book. So whatever year that was, you hated the push. It was for me. It was 100% for me. Um, but if you ever read that, like, can we discuss? 
because that thing had a grip on me. She was an incredible writer and it was like a life-changing fanfic. And I feel like that's what Manacle is going to be like. So we'll see. But of course, I was also like 16 when that was going on. So I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe it was a little, it was a little, it was like a little more touching because I didn't have access to as many things back then. But, but this is the last book that I think I read that I physically have at the very least. And it's funny you should ask. I don't, I didn't like it. Elisa Sussman. I, I don't know. A lot of people like were so into this and um, it's so good. And I didn't think so. Like, why, why did they even like each other? That's my least favorite thing to come away from a book with is like the question of why were they even into each other? Where was the chemistry? Look at you. You're pretty. Oh, you're pretty. Okay, let's go do it. Okay, well, why are you doing it? Like, okay, fine. You did it because you're both attractive. You like each other physically. Okay, but now why are you in a relationship? Why are you changing your lives to be in a relationship? Why? Y'all don't even, what, what? I did not enjoy this book. I was so glad when it ended. I didn't hate it, but yeah. Um. Okay. <laughs> Let's, sugar, it was sugar? Rogue sugar, like sugar. But it wasn't sugar. But is that just how you pronounce it? Is that what you're saying? Um, funny you should ask is what it looks like. What does that even mean? Like, not very interesting? Because it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know. Some people really like it. But it was just not for me. I felt that about Happy Place. Happy Place was my least favorite Emily Henry book. And I'm sad because I really thought that, like, Emily Henry, it just they can't all be automatic yes. Because then, then what? How's that going to work? But uh, one of you mentioned that you're reading. Oh, I forgot I have these in here. No, I'm not going to take one. Look how cute they are. Though. They're just like little. I am going to take one. You're just going to have to deal with it. One little tiny candy. But one of you said you're reading The Coldest Winter Ever. I want to read this. That's why I bought it. It's a super old book. But I feel like how have I gotten to this point in life without reading it? I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> I don't know, but it's here now, so it's going to be read. But let's get into the haul now. I think I might have read one or two other things, to be honest with you. I don't remember, and they're not physically right here in front of me, so we're just going to say I didn't, and we'll just say that's what I got. I'm not going to hit my 100 books for this year. That was my goal, but, like, it's such an arbitrary goal. It's not like I get anything from it, and who cares? So I just needed a nice number to put there, but... um. I think I'm going to end up at like 80, which is not bad. But I will say, I was picking up books and I was not getting five-star reads. Like for the most part. Oh, speaking of five-star reads, that was the other book I read. I was reading books by this girl, Abby Jimenez. I read this book actually. Why was it over here then? I don't know. But I read the first two in this series. And I really liked the first one. And I liked that it had a very messy ending. And people hated the ending. And they hated what she did to the characters. Oh, I loved it. I ate that up, boy. This one, though, the first 70% was fine. The last, like, 30%, I was like, don't you hate when a book j it's just too perfect. It's like every Colleen Hoover book I've ever read. The way that she wraps up every single situation, every single meeting that they've ever had, every single everything, every single thought, everything, 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 everything. It's all because he loves her. You know what I'm saying? Not enough love in the world, baby. Not enough love in the world. Let them be human. Let them make mistakes. Let them... We were so close. Abby Humanis has been like a new author for me this year that I'm really into. And you know what? <laughs> this was not the one for me. But her other books, I have really enjoyed them. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> what is that? No, never heard of that person. You need my shirt? It's from Box Lunch. Dang it, Bobby. That boy ain't right. I love this shirt. It's so great. Um... <laughs> the Mile High Club. Is that the one with the three brothers? And no, there's two that are really similar. Is that the one? 
Because if that's, I might have read the first couple in that one. But let's get into what I actually purchased. Oh, here. We'll start here. I went to Books A Million and I ended up buying two, you're reading Friend Zone. Good luck, babe. Because if you haven't gotten to the end yet, it's a wild time. But it's it's fun until it isn't. Okay, I picked up these two at Books A Million and I got them because they're beautiful. Like you can't touch them and you know feel them in person right now. These books are gorgeous. Like they are so nice. I saw them sitting on the shelf and I was like, you're coming home with me. And then I realized how much they cost. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculously expensive. I don't like that. But Sylvia Day, I guess this is a duology. So it's called the Blacklist Duology, I guess. But Sylvia Day uh, wrote the Crossfire series. And then I think she got into some paranormal stuff, which I'm really not into paranormal books. Not really. Like I try to, but they're just not really for me because there's not enough rules in a paranormal book. Anything can happen. I need rules. I need boundaries. I need to know what to expect. Like I, I just need something there. So pick these up and I'm going to read them this month. Although I will say that I keep rereading like the first five pages of the first book and, um, and then disappearing and reading something else. I don't know why. Okay. Okay. These are the next two. All right. These are the next two. I got these both from a Lumicrate. Have any of you ever read it? Either? No, I didn't. I got one from Lumicrate and I got one from the other one, the bookish box. So they're both special editions. This one's called Second Chances. It's a male male uh, romance and it's by TJ Alexander. I don't really know what it's about. I do like the cover and I like the sides, but I don't normally read male male romance because there's nowhere for me to insert myself. And I like to be in the story. I'm the girl in every story. So if I don't like what happens to the girl, then I don't like the book because it happened to me. You know what I mean? That's pretty much where I'm at. And so that's why sometimes I like when bad stuff happens because I'm like, oh yeah, girl, you dealt with that real good. I like that for you. Then I got this one, which is Masters of Death by, <laughs> is her name Olivy? Olivy, I always thought it was Olivia. Olive Blake, she wrote um, Atlas Six, right? I didn't read that either, but, oh, okay. Well, that's good. Seems like some of you like it. That's good. Um, I was hoping maybe it was gonna be like YA and I could give it to my daughter, but I don't think it is. So that's okay. But it's such a pretty book, right? <laughs> like, you know, it's nice. Have you seen Spoiler Alert? I didn't know Atlas Six was a series. And I haven't read it either. I need to find how to get through so many books in a month. Well, I wouldn't treat it like it's something you have to get through. You know what I mean? If you just enjoy reading, just whenever you find yourself doing something that's not, you know, work, school, family, life related, and you just have free time, just pick up a book. Or for me personally, I like to do audiobooks um, when I'm cooking, cleaning, and working, but working with like my hands and not my eyes. Just kidding. Working with my eyes and not my ears. That's what I meant. So, yeah. <gasps> I was supposed to get new books today. Do you think they got delivered and I just didn't open the door? That's very possible. It's relevant because I bought the first two and these other ones. So, I went to the Chicago and I went to the last chapter bookstore. And, <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed it. It was cute. I went with my best friend and then we went next door and we had like the best coffees they had. And it wasn't even coffee. It was an orchata chai. And it was so good. And I never had one of those before. Um, so that was a good time. But I will say that I spent a lot of money here because the books are just regular, regular full price. Like Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, Anderson's. I'm a member at all of those. So I get money off. You know what I mean? Um, so this was a very expensive, oh, I bent the cover. This was a very expensive trip, but I was happy to support them because it's a relatively new store and it's like all um, romance books. It's all romance books. So if you're in the Chicagoland area, just know that. So it was fun. It was a fun time. I had a good old time, but like I said, I, I mean, it's not going to be where I'm regularly buying my books. That's for sure. But uh, what did I get? Oh, I think I got these. Oh, I got this one for myself. Check this out. Okay. Booked and busy, baby. Lizzie McGuire status. 
And then this one is from, this one is obviously Taylor Swift. And it says, don't read the last page. I'm not going to lie to you. I have no idea what that means. But I was going to give this to my daughter for Christmas. And it's a good thing that I just found this because I forgot it was in there. And then I got a cute little, cute little card. So that's what I bought that wasn't books. Oh, I also bought this, which was like $45. And I did not know that until after I checked out. But it's just um, a little green crew neck. And it says last chapter book club, Chicago established. I think it's last year. Oh, 2023 this year. So that's cool. And let me just show you what I got there though. So I picked up, are these bookmarks? Oh, they put a lot of bookmarks in there. Kind of should have probably taken those out sooner. I like my books spicy and my coffee icy. Oh, I bought that too. At first I thought that was free, but no, I paid for that. <laughs> it's true. It's exactly how I like my books. So I picked up these three. I think I just got the first three. No, I got four. These are by Elsie Silver. To be honest with you, I don't like the covers. I don't think, I don't think they're that cute. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I know there's other covers and I kind of like the other covers better. The ones with the people on them, but I didn't see those. I never see those. So I don't know if they're just like online or what, but I picked up Heartless, Powerless, Flawless, Reckless. I have read two of these. And if you ask me which two, I couldn't even tell you because the names are confusing to me, but I read the, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I was really going to pretend like I did because I thought I did, but I don't. They're pretty good, though. I like these ones. You definitely get to feel the relationship a little bit more. I like a good slow burn. Not that these ones are all that slow, but they're a little slow. They got a little drama in there. I like that. I like that. That's a good time. What's the spiciest book you've read? Um, the series by, uh, oh, it's right there. It's right there. Spicy, but also good because they're spicy and then it's just spice and nothing else. It's just people boning on a page and it's low-key kind of uncomfortable because like, why am I even in the room? I don't even know y'all. You know what I mean? That's how it feels. And some people like that. And that's fine with me, girl. I'm not here to judge. I'll show you in a minute though. A couple of my favorite series, like before I actually sign off with you guys, because they're sitting right there. They're all on a shelf together. Being beautiful. You guys are doing great. I don't know if I've told you lately, but you're really holding it together over there. This, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Abby Amanda's life's too short. I don't think this is part of, actually, this is after the Happy Ever After playlist, isn't it? This is the next one, isn't it? Or am I tripping? I don't know. Maybe it's not. Oh, but uh, this girl quits her job to pursue traveling the globe and she wasn't expecting to get a million followers on YouTube. So she started sharing her joy and seizing the moment. Ooh, seize the moment, girl. And she's 30 and yada, yada, yada. And she's going to get a baby, somebody's baby. And she's going to meet some dude named Adrian. Ooh, and he's a hot lawyer. This is all this is all working for me right now. So I am definitely going to read this. I do like Abby Jimenez's writing a lot. Um, her books are not smutty. Oh, this one. Who was talking about this? I knew I bought one. This is not the first one, though, is it? Is this the second one? I don't know, but I know it's on my Kindle and I started reading it and I don't think that I finished it. <laughs> I don't think I ever finished reading it, but maybe I did, I don't know. Um, let me see. Yeah, I don't know. I do think it's weird that like a bunch of the pages are bold and then a bunch of the pages are not bold. And I assume that's like a perspective shift, but that's unpleasant. I don't actually like that. Because the bold pages feel like they take up too much of the page. Like the like the like high club. I think the men are all named Miles, right? Like their last names or something. Billionaire Playboys. Where are they meeting all these billionaires? Where are they? at work? <laughs> billionaires have jobs with regular people? Crazy. Good for them. I also picked up Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. I have yet to read any of her books, but I've heard good things and I follow her on socials and I see her like hanging out with people and stuff. And I'm like, she just looks like a good time. Like her books must be a good time. And if they're not, well, I'm going to find out. But if they are great, I'll pick up more of them. Thank you. She has a bunch. Look what I did to it. Straight to jail. <laughs> Straight to jail. Okay, here we go. The man, the myth, the legend. 
Rena Kent. So these are neither one of these is the first one. The first ones were sold out. Always. First one's always sold out. Why? Because it's the only one people want to buy, apparently. So I got number two in both of these. So this is the Monster Trilogy. Yes, this is the Monster Trilogy. And I ordered the first one on Target. That's why it's not here. That's why it's not here yet. I'm like, damn, Amazon's taking a long time. Yeah, sure it is, especially when you didn't even order anything. And then this one is the Legacy of God series, which I have heard nothing but amazing things about it. And Rena Kent's a very interesting author to me. I read Vow of Deception, the first book. And when I got to the end of that book, I was like, what the hell just happened? And I was like, and I still think about it. And I'm like, dude, this author, she's she knows what she's doing. She's out here killing the game. And uh, Larry, I think, Larry Reads, Larissa, she is obsessed with this whole series. And I realized that we have quite a bit of similar like loves when it comes to books there's some that she's into that I really did not like but for the most part we're very like this with what we like so the fact that she's obsessed with this series I was like let me get the first one let me get the first one because I know I'm gonna need them all and I know I'm gonna eat them all up and I'm just very excited about that Rena Kent is a really Rena Kent is a very she's a great author she really is she'll mess with your brain and I love that I want somebody to play with my head. I really do. That's my favorite thing. I want to, I want my brain to be all in pretzels and I don't want to know what's going on. And I want to be shocked and I want to be sad and I want to be happy and I want to be all the other things. And she can do that. And Aletha, I can never for the life of me over 10 years, I do not know how to say her name. Aletha Romig, R-O-M-I-G. Her books are crazy. Her books are wild. Do not read the reviews of some of them because there's this one person who keeps spoiling them and you can very much spoil the book like it's a her books are crazy but if you get told what the stuff is then it's not you're not going to have the same experience ever again so anyway yada 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 don't read the reviews just just go off vibes it's incredible this is the last book i bought i actually already read this book <laughs> and i liked it I think Katie Robert is incredibly smutty, right? Her books are super duper smutty. A lot of smut. She goes for it. She goes for the gold. I didn't love Neon Gods. In fact, I kind of trudged through it. Like I really forced myself to finish it. And then I got Electric Idol. And I was like, oh, this one was fine. This was okay. But then, babe, I got to this one. This one worked for me. Because like I said, I am her. She is me. We are one. We are we. Okay, so um, she, okay, she was a, 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 a little, a little plus size gal, a little plus size cutie pie. Okay, and he was just in love with her. He was just so in love with her. It was just so, he was just, I loved how he treated it, the whole situation, the everything. I loved them together and it just made me so happy. So I had to physically buy the book because um, I didn't have the physical copy and I just, I just loved it. It's just so good. If You don't even got to read the other ones. They're inconsequential. You don't even need to read those, okay? And there's a few more after this. I haven't read them. I quit because I really don't enjoy the series as a whole, but I love this one. This was a good time. She was a good time. Yes, okay, the memoir, uh, Britney Spears. Britney Spears. I haven't read it yet. I am going to read hers. I am also going to read uh, The Chef. He has passed away. What is his name? Anthony Bourdain. So I read a book about Anthony Bourdain written by someone that was very close to him after his death. And they discuss it. They discuss what happened and stuff. And um, I thought that was really good. But then my brother read Anthony Bourdain's memoir, which I think is Kitchen Confidential, which I think I'm going to order from Book of the Month, actually, because they have it. And he was like, you have to read this memoir. It is like incredible. It is so good. And I was like, okay, I can do that. So I'm going to read that one. I'm going to read the Britney Spears one. I might read the Paris Hilton one. I think that show, that um, that show, uh, is it Netflix? Like, it's just showing you a different part of Paris Hilton. And I'm kind of like, mm, am I about to become a Paris Hilton stan? I don't know. Maybe. But I'm going to read hers. And then I want to read a very off-the-wall one. <laughs> I want to read Norm MacDonald's memoir because 
my brother again said it was so good. It was so fun. I I love them. I think it's fun to hear other people's stories. I have been disappointed by quite a few of them, but I will say it's either one because they chose not to let us in. And if you don't want to let us in, then why did you write a book about yourself? Keep the door closed. Keep the book in the crib. That's what I do. I, I keep it over here. I just keep it tucked away. Keep it at the house if you don't want to let us in. Or two, they're fronting. You do not remember that. You could not tell me the breath and the this and the that. You're fronting right now. You are straight fronting. There is no possible way you are giving me that memory with that clarity, that depth, that much color. There is no damn way that you are doing that through the entire book. I don't care who you are. You're not doing that. I don't like when they do that. And then the third is you have not done enough to be able to reflect on those things as a person with who's grown from it um, to, to tell me how to do it. You know what I'm saying? And, and there's one really good example of that. And I didn't think the book was bad. I just thought that he should have waited to write the book. And it's this one. I don't think this book should have come out. This was like before, I don't know, but it's this one. He just, what? it's like he wasn't ready. He even says it. He says it in the book. He's like, um, yeah, do I even really have the authority at this point in my life to write a memoir? Like, yeah, sir. Wait it out a little bit. I'm going to check you out in 20 years. We're going to see what happens. We're both going to be old and gray. Well, maybe not gray. I mean, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, she didn't change her baby's diaper. I did read Will Smith's. And uh, yes, he has a memoir. <laughs> um, when do you do your devotional Bible reading? In the morning normally. But it's always right here. It's always sitting here chilling. Be still and know. Okay. Uh, what's the worst book you read in 2023? Forgot that was there. The worst book I read? That's a good question. I'm sure I remember if I like, you know, I, I feel like I try to block them out, to be honest with you, because uh, it's rough. Oh, my brother's book club book pick. I don't even own it. I was so pissed off of that book. I think I got rid of it. And it's called like, oh my God, I don't even know. It's the worst book I've ever read in my life, in my life. Can you recommend a spicy love story like Fifty Shades but better? Yes. First of all, I don't know if you heard me say it earlier, but the Crossfire series, this is like Fifty Shades, but Fifty Shades better. Better writing, better couple, better sitch, much better. Oh, Viola Davis. I do love the way her book looks. I always look at it. Is it Viola or Viola? And how are you even going to tell me? Because I can't hear you. Um, <laughs> I did hate that book. I can't remember what it's called, to be honest with you guys, though. It's a really weird book. She sympathizes with Hitler. And she's like, she's like, oh, he um, he was just, you know, maybe if his daddy gave him more coloring pages, he it's really, are we sure? Is this chapter even necessary? Was this necessary? I feel like, what are we doing? Oh, I'm uncomfy. I'm very uncomfy right now. Um, uh, so I, <laughs> the second way, Viola or Viola? Viola. Oh, okay, I was right. So I was right with my initial Viola. Or did I say Viola first? No, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Okay, hold on. Let me grab these little stacks right here of these books that I just, I will love. I will love forever and ever and ever and ever okay one moment enjoy what is that oh it's just it's just a little piece of paper it looked like a hole though Ugh, i'm gonna destroy my bookshelves for you people and i'm gonna love it i'm gonna love every minute of it i'm just gonna tell you my favorite series like five series off the top of my head that are like damn that slaps like that Oh, maybe not. Maybe let's just do three. <sighs> Should we do three? I don't know. Okay, and then I'm going to give you my favorite books of the last few years. 
How about that? How did that sound? Do, 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 Okay, so I read The Unhoneymooners a couple years ago. I read it again this year. I really liked it. I still like it. I loved the banter in this book. I loved it, period. And did you know that Christina Lauren, they actually wrote a follow-up to this. It's like half the size and not physically because it's an audio book and it follows the sister and it's great. It's such a fun time. And there's like a male voice and a female voice and it's just like, so damn, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good time. So that is on, is it on Audible? No, is it on Scribed? It's on something. It's on one of those streaming services, but it it's, comes after the Unhoneymooners. I thought this was a really fun book. I like that our heroine is a little, you know, she's a little curvaceous babe. And I loved the banter. I thought it was so funny. It was such a good, it was just such a great page from a couple years ago. This is by Helen Huang. This is a three in the series this is the second one in the series I picked this up one day at Barnes and Noble and I think me and Lewis were like going on a date I go eat jazz club yada yada no the way I couldn't put this down I was reading it in the car in the dark I could not put it down I bought it at the store I could not put it down I didn't even want to go anywhere because I was like I must finish this book I am obsessed I am in love we went to a jazz club and the jazz had like not started yet and he was like should we just leave and I was like yes let's get out of here because I need to go see this world. I need to be in this world, not this one right now. I loved it. And I read this before I read the first one. So you don't need to read the first one. And I read the third one. And you don't need to read the third one. Just this one by itself, the bride test. She was a good time. And I, to be honest with you, I wouldn't even recommend the other two necessarily. That's the one for me. And you're not going to be lost if you don't read the first one. You're going to be totally fine. This one I also thought was really good. Love the banter. You deserve each other. Sarah Hogle. This is technically like a second chance romance type of thing. But they're already married. But they're like any divorce. But they're already married. You know what I'm saying? And this was good. Again, the banter. The back and forth. It was funny. They were going through it. They were breaking up. They were not. It was real. I loved it. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I loved it. It was so good. No. Okay, that was a good question. Okay, someone said, have you ever read any of the real versions of any of the princess storylines? Um, no, I haven't, but I have been thinking about it because I'm so obsessed with Belle and like the Beast. And if that's what you're talking about, you're talking about like those Disney princesses, like the, the but the real stories. That's what you're talking about, right? And I'm like, there have got to be like really in-depth looks at these stories that are like more adult, you know? And I was just, I was just thinking about that yesterday. I was like, dang, I should really find one because I'm sure it would be so good. Anyway, this is another book that I think is absolutely incredible. And I, I think it was a one-off. Like, look, I don't want to like slight Jojo Moyes here, but I have read so many of her books. None of them even come close to this book. I have read this countless times. I am like bawling every time I read it. I love this book. I love this book. This is a five star, million star read for me. I loved it so much. Of course, I have seen the movie. If any book has a movie, I have seen the movie. If the movie is obscure and weird and nobody watched it, I did. <laughs> I watched it. Okay. I am going to watch it. That's <gasps> Now I remember the worst book I read this year. It was the first book I read this year and I watched the movie and they were both really bad. What was it called? 101, 365 days. It's on my top shelf because that's the shelf I don't read because it's the worst books I've ever read. 365 days by Blanca something. I don't got my glasses on girl. I don't know. 365 days. Worst book I've ever read. Like that's not that weird book that my brother recommended. Worst book that I've ever read. That's just a regular paperback book that you can go buy at like Walmart or something. Worst book ever. Though, anyway, so good. So good. Have you read the rest of the series? I did. I continued the series, um, but I didn't, I just, it was, it was them. You know what I mean? I needed, I needed more than just 
Louisa Clark. You know what I mean? I needed more than I, I, I needed. A, I needed more. Let me put it that way. So as not to I needed more. This was my other like all time favorite book for my entire life. This is literally the one I read when I was like 15 years old, 13, 14 years old, however old I was. Um, this is the one I read. I have read this book. I mean, no exaggeration. I probably read this book. I don't know. I don't even know. I mean, it was it was nothing for me to like go lay in bed one day, grab it, and all of a sudden I reread the whole book. It was nothing for me to do that. It's by Nicholas Sparks, same dude who you know wrote the Notebook and every other freaking book ever. Like, and they're all set in North Carolina. Like, he's really got a hard on for North Carolina. So they're all set there, including this one. And I love this book. And I wish there were like special editions of it. I have never been able to find a hard copy, a special edition, anything. I have one other version of it. It's just another paperback, but it's not the mass produced one. But this is the one literally from my childhood. So this is the one I'm like, you know, I like the most. But <sighs> Landon Carter. You know my son's name? Jaden Carter. I wanted his first name to be Carter because that's how much I love his book. But we ended up going with Jay. Good thing that's not a popular name, huh? He only has like six other kids every single time he's in class that have the exact same name. So I told him to go by Carter and he was like, nah. It's like, fine. But if you knew what was good for you, you would. This is another super good book. Oh, yes, it is a classic. Not this. It's not a classic. Um, I can't see the name of the author on that book. On this book, it's Nicholas Sparks, if that's what you're talking about. This is also a movie, obviously. Mandy Moore, Shane West. Yes, I had an unhealthy obsession with Shane West. And this is when the internet was still kind of hard to use. So for me to like be able to download a Shane West music video or a Mandy Moore music video for that matter. But Mandy Moore was like on TV. Shane West was not. For me to be able to like download that, it took days. It took scouring LimeWire. It, it was real. I was working hard for this. And I can quote the entire movie I can, down to the blink, okay? I Gun to my head, Sarah, recite one entire movie. This is the one. And if it was a song, it would be La Bamba. Just so you know. Just so you know. But I, love La Bamba. I uh, saw somebody the other day, and he, uh, it was my, my best friend's friend. All of a sudden, he was like, he doesn't know Spanish or anything. And he was like, he was like, if there was one song I had to sing, and he starts singing La Bamba. And I was like, me too. Like, what are the chances? It's And we just, the whole, you know, then, of course, we sang the entire La Bamba at the bar. But it was it was a beautiful time. Um, the Hating Game, Sally Thorne, again, again. Did she have a ghostwriter? I don't understand. This book was good. The movie I've probably seen this movie 20 times. It didn't even come out that long ago. So that's like too many times. But I love Lucy Hale. She's just so pretty. I just love her so much. I love her. I love her. I love her. I love the book. It was great. It had good banter. It was a fun time. Another five-star read for me. Loved it. Obviously, I read that forever ago. And I've read it a couple of times now. And it's good every time. But I read Sally Thorne's at least one other book. And I just... It was hard to get through. You know what I mean? Like it was it was hard to get through. So I don't know. But yeah, it was it was it was rough. Um but <laughs> wait, let me respond to Jaden. He wants to know if he can make a popcorn and take it to his room. Yes, you can. There you go. Because he will continue to uh yeah. Um loved her in pretty little liars. Yeah, I never saw that show, but I, I've heard good things, but she's so pretty. She's so pretty. I just love it. And my other favorite book that a lot of people didn't enjoy, and I totally understand why, was The Spanish Love Deception. But this book, this book, the whole time, the slow burn, that he's so obsessed with her, that all of that, oh, that was it for me, babe. That was the one. Hey, Aaron Blackford, he said, no, girl. You're going to know when I'm done playing. You're going to know it's real because you're going to know it's real like that. I'm like, Aaron, what are you talking about? What is happening? It was good, though. I don't know if, um, like, neither one of her, like, subsequent releases really lived up to this one at all for me. But, damn, I love this book. This was, like, 10 out of 10 for me. Literally all the books I just mentioned, 
I could reread them. If you were like, Sarah, 10 books, floop, it's those. And that's not even 10, but it's those. Now I do have three series right here that just completely, they were, wow. Wowza. Okay. Wowza. We're going to start with this right here. Yeah. I even got the covers that are a little cringy because I got the boys on them. That's right. Are they all the same dude? They could be. I don't know. No, those guys are different. They're different. Where the hell is this? One? Oh, it's right there. They're all supposed to be different guys. They're supposed to be brothers and stuff. Well, they're not all brothers. That's not true. Whatever. <clears throat> Just a group of models all hanging out with each other. I don't know, man. Um, but the American roommate experiment was a, yeah, I didn't like the American roommate experiment. I thought the last one was a little bit better. Um, but still, honestly, none of them were like that amazing. You read the devil books. Okay. So I don't know why they're called that, but the devil, you know, by Elizabeth O'Rourke, the devil and the deep blue sea, the devil. Oh, a deal with the devil. That's the first one. <laughs> and then. The devil gets his due. They were pretty much all five or four and a half star reads for me. Maybe one was four stars. These were these were solid. Again, the banter, the the going back and forth, the everything. It was so good. If you got a problem with the covers, they're on Kindle. Okay, that's how I read. I read them all on Kindle, and then I was like, I must own these. Okay, I must. Oh, dee dee dee. If anyone ever asks for recommendations, I must have the books ready and available. And here they are. So here they are. Oh, Gabriel's Inferno. It looks delightful. Wait a second. What does that mean? Like the movies? Because the movies that they made for Gabriel's Inferno, which there's three Gabriel, right? Gabriel's Inferno, Gabriel, Gabriel's Redemption, Gabriel's Rapture. Some of the most pretentious books I've ever read. Smutty books. But... They're like talking about Dante's Inferno and mur, 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 and you're my Beatrice and da da da. I read those about 10 years ago. And actually the author, so kind of him, um, he is a man, right? Like it was a guy, Sylvan. I'm almost positive it was a male author. I've never, but it, like you cannot find, I could never find a photo of the actual author. It's like the author was completely like not a part of the earth and just the name existed. So that's why I never knew. But the author sent me a signed copy of another book that they'd released and I was like wow that's so cool but then I never read it but Gabriel's Inferno that series it was really really good it's definitely not for everybody a lot of people are definitely not gonna enjoy that book but the ones that like it is for them it is for them and then and then the devil book series is Elizabeth O'Rourke for those of you asking um but the the what's it called passion flicks so Passion Flicks makes books into movies and they show them all on there pretty much. Unless they're really big, like The Hanging Game is not on there. Um, but like other ones that you would know that maybe like the books were really popular, like Fifty Shades are not going to be on there. You know what I mean? Like things that were a little bit more mainstream are not going to be on there. But they did the movies for Gabriel's Inferno and they did those things like word for word off the books. And it's like a billion movies for those three books. And it's like every book lover's dream, I feel like. That being said, I did not really like who they picked to play one of the characters. And if you want to know if you would like those books, watch the movie. And whatever feeling you have on the inside, if you're like, ooh, that's what the book is going to do too. But if you're like, hmm, that's what the book is going to do too. Okay, so just know that. A little cringy, yes. But it's definitely for the person that it's for. Let me put it that way. It, oh, you might love it, babe. You might love it, love it, love it. What's the site for the movies? It's called Passion Flicks, which is super fun when you have deductions to a place called Passion Flicks, F-L-I-X, okay, Passion Flicks. And your accountant is like, is Passion Flicks, is that um for your business? Or what's that? What does it sound like? Because I think we both know what it sounds like. And it's not like normal people know about it. What does it sound like? Don't ever call me again. <laughs> we must communicate through emails from this point on, okay? Not to mention, I accidentally had two accounts, so I was getting multiple charges to Passionflix. And I was like, it's not, um, it's not business related. No, um, sorry, I used the wrong, I used the wrong account. 
uh, clearly I use the wrong account. I am so sorry that we're even having this conversation. <laughs> Please end the call. <laughs> so it was what it was. But um, <laughs> it's called Passion Flix, and you it's just an app. Like you'll you know you'll see it on your TV and stuff like that. I think it's like five ninety nine or something. Uh, yes, I did. Oh, I didn't read the Parallel series by Elizabeth O'Rourke. She's a really good author. I did not like her. I don't find myself particularly enjoying her new series either. The Summer We Fell, I think, was the first one. It's like too much drama. These ones have drama, but like they had a lot of relationship and back and forth. And it was so fun. Like I was LOLing, okay? Literally laughing out loud. And it, that was beautiful. That's a wonderful time. No, I did not read Fourth Wing. <laughs> But you know what? I read, I read, it's unrelated, but I read Ninth House. And then I really tried to get through Hellbent. Again, unrelated. It was just like a different popular series. And I just couldn't. And I'm like, I think it's just, these are not for me. I don't think Fourth Wing would be for me. I didn't enjoy Sarah J. Mass's books. Um, not that I thought they were bad, but it just wasn't like, it's just not my cup of tea. In fact, it is a cup of tea. And I wanted coffee. You know what I mean? That was a situation. I can appreciate a cup of tea. But I would prefer not to if I didn't have to. So, uh, yes. So <laughs> this is another series and author that I think did the damn thing. And this is totally different. So this is Mafia Romance. And it is smutty. Um, but it's got a plot. And if you could only read one, because for some reason you have a you have a 300-page limit in your life, you can only read one of these. Look, Sweetest Oblivion is the first one. And this was good. This was a good time. I was having a very good time. I definitely enjoyed this. Wow, what a time. Flew through it. Flew through it. Is it over? That's so sad. I'm glad there's another. Mattis Obsession, get out of here. This one? This one? This one? Oh, babe. This was the one, in fact. Uh, so... Uh, this was the one. If you can only read one, it's going to be this one, okay? I did not see our main girl here having the redemption arc that she did. I was like, how the heck, how am I going to learn to love this girl? Um, Elizabeth, no, Danielle, she was like, I will tell you how. Buckle up, babe. You're in for a wild ride. This one I also enjoyed, but it was my least favorite. But it was still a very good book, but it was my least favorite. I didn't like the sitch. I didn't like the general situation. I do love that I have to look up like Russian words and stuff. And I absolutely loathe when a book has a different language in it. And it always happens to be freaking Spanish. Like I feel like 90% of the time it's Spanish. But when a book has a different language in it and they use the language, which is fine. That's good, right? But then they make the character repeat everything but in English. I hate when they do that. It's like saying, um, uh, uh, what, what could they say? Oh, está en el carro. Oh, okay. Oh, it's in the car? Why? Why do we have to duplicate everything? If you want to say it in Spanish, say it in Spanish. If you want to say it in Russian, make me go look it up. If I care that much, make me go look it up. Okay? I have Google. How do you think I found out about you? Uh, a little pet peeve of mine. They don't do that in here. I was looking up words left and right. I was like, now what the hell is this mean? <laughs> now, do I need my Russian? I don't think so. I think if I was going to learn one, another language, it should be like the third most popular language, right? Or one of the top three languages. That's what I feel like. Um... <laughs> LOL at that comment. I'm not even going to read it out loud, but uh, okay. And then these ones. So someone asked earlier, what's a really good smutty series? This was a series that I read a very long time ago, very long time ago. And I think if I had to pick one for like other people to read, you want plot, you want to care about characters, you want a lot of books about the same people, you're really getting to know them, um, then you want to read this series. And it starts with this book. It's called The Boss by Abigail Barnett. It is a smutty series. And it is, yeah, it's the alter ego of a woman named Jenny Trout. So that's her other name, basically. 
This series has all of that. I have never encountered anything like this series ever before in my life. I only recently bought these because they weren't even available um, like when I first started reading. And it's just, it's amazing. So it's the, I think it's the boss because she's his boss. Okay. No, because he's her boss. Billionaire, billionaire boss, billionaire boss, babes. And uh, then I think it was the girlfriend. And then I think it was the ex and then the bride or the bride and then the ex and then the baby and whatever. I think there was another one actually. And there were some little novellas in between. Those were very interesting. Um, these were really smutty. I don't really read books that are this smutty anymore normally. Because these were like, but the, bro, like they had so much plot. There was so much story in the boss. It was insane. Um, no, I haven't read the newest one. So I haven't read them in a long time, but I'll never forget these books. And then, like I said, that that series by Alethea Romag, uh, it's called, it's the one with the like checkerboard, not checker. What the heck? What's the fancy thing? What's fancy checkers? Chess. Um, fancy chess. It's not called chess though. It's not called checkmate. It's not called chess mate. It's called consequences it's called the consequences series amazing wowzer amazing <sighs> let me see let me see let me see that series had me reading at a casino table in vegas lol, LOL. <laughs> oh you're right i said don't read the stopover series oh i love how i have no memory Oh, that's really rough for me i don't know what should i be taking for that like eating more oranges or something yes I did read the Stopover series. That was the series that I was confusing with this. Oh, crap. Is this it? Did I buy the physical book of the stories I already don't want to read? <clears throat> that actually definitely feels like something. You know what's funny is I was in there and I was talking to my friend and I was like, there was this one, the Miles High Club. And then there was one called like the Mile High Club or something very similar. And ginkgo biloba okay hopefully i remember that um anyway uh i was like one of these i didn't enjoy and one of them i really wanted to read and i picked up this one and there it is there it is thanks for that yes yeah, so don't read the stopover series because if you want that but way better better writing better plot better literally better everything a hundred percent this is the series for you. 100,000%. Like I've not, I've just never read anything like this. And it just is incredible. I don't know why I haven't picked up more stuff from her. You know what happens is that I fall so in love with a particular series, a particular universe from an author. And then none of their other books like live up to it. And with Daniel Laurie, I'm just waiting, babe. Like <laughs> drop, drop the new CD. Like what's going on? What are you doing? Drop, drop it, drop it. You have like all these that are waiting to get, drop them, drop them unedited. Uh, my brain will edit for you. Don't even worry about it. You know, those sentences where like only the first and last letter are correct and the rest of the letters are jumbled. That's my brain with your books. Drop them. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to love it. Don't even worry about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I also stopped getting things as well. Um, like before I actually read them sometimes because they're so, some of them are so, some of them are bad. And then you feel forced to read it. There's one series I'm thinking of right now where I forced myself through it purely because I own the first two. And I was like, oh, never again. But clearly, potentially again. But I have, I trust Rena Kent. Like, I know I bought four of her books without even reading any of, from that series. But I trust Rena Kent, girl, because... If anybody knows who, what they're doing, it's her. She's going to mess me up, and I'm going to have a really good time with it. Are you subscribed to Passion Flicks? All I'm saying is the movies are, like, very much books that you may or may not have read, especially if they were older. Um, and it was, they're, you know, it's nice. It's nice to just be able to watch, like, B-list actors, C-list actors, like, just play out your favorite book. It's a beautiful thing. There's obviously people out there who want that. And it's me. 
kind people. Um, yeah, audiobooks are a great way to like kind of get through something. And if you're not enjoying something, but you want to finish it, you know, for whatever reason, or if you find yourself like not being able to focus, try an audio. And for audio, I have Audible, which I think is kind of pricey for what it is, but it's like 16 bucks for one credit a month. But the catalog is massive. Pretty much any book you could possibly want is going to be on there. And then I have Book of the Month. And I want to say their credit is a little bit less. Um, so, but it's like 15 bucks a month. And you have that, right? <laughs> so you can use Book of the Month. I use that every now and again. They have my least favorite interface for listening to books. Um, ads will run shortly. Have there been ads on this? I'm going to skip ads. I didn't even see that. That was behind my, dang, that was behind my phone. I have my phone sitting here. Um, but yeah, uh, then I have Scribed, which became Everand, which it just switched names. But, oh, that's nice. Um, Everand, apparently Audible's on. Catalogs are smaller, but you can also read books too, like Kindle books and stuff like that. And there's sheet music on there, all kinds of stuff on there. But it's not as many... The selection is just smaller. So, for instance, none of the books on my TBR right now are on Everant. At, with the exception of, like, Bared to You and just, a, I don't know. I don't know how they decide. And for the most part, oh, you have had ads. Okay, that's good. Oh, you did have an ad. Okay, I don't know. Who just I don't know how they decide who gets ads. I also use Libby, which is um, the library. Again, I mean, I'm waiting months and months for books, and then you get two weeks to finish it. I don't normally need two weeks, but yeah, sometimes you just wait, 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 wait. And then a lot of times they're not even on. And Spotify gives you 15 free hours. If you have a membership with them, like you're subscribed, you get 15 free hours and then you can buy 10 additional hours for like $13.99 or something. And then you get 15 hours reset every like once a month, like every two weeks, it gets reset. Which you think like, oh, 15 hours. Like that's a book, basically. So, and it doesn't matter. You are listening to a 10-hour book at two speed and it only takes five hours to get through it. That was still 10 hours of listening. Just FYI, because I made that mistake. Uh, I also, they don't warn you. So your book is cut off. Mine cut off when I had 17 minutes left. And I was like, mm, you're lucky I got the paper back. Because I would have been fighting you right now. But yeah, just so you know, it's just free on there. And they have all the books. They have like basically the Audible catalog. Same thing, pretty much. So if you already have Spotify, it's good to use it. But <clears throat> did somebody burn popcorn? I know he made popcorn, but it smells burnt. Have you considered reading books as a voice actor? I don't think I'm meant for it. <laughs> I don't think I, yeah, I considered it. I did actually, <laughs> like for myself. And I don't think I'm meant for it. Um, I also have Hoopla. I don't think I've ever used Hoopla. Is that for the library? But I don't know. Whoa, you finished book 152 for the year? What was your favorite book? Is there a book on your TBR that's collecting dust? Yes. Have you finished Hooked? No, I haven't finished <laughs> It's collecting dust now. No, I did like it though. I, I liked it as I was reading it. But then I just, all of a sudden I was upstairs and I was reading stuff on my Kindle and Hooked isn't on my Kindle. Um, uh, yeah, so there are a couple of books on here that have been here forever. One of them is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. These ones have been on my list or on my shelf forever. I don't even want to read them. I really don't. <laughs> have you read A Little Life? Can you see it? Mm, it's all the way up there. And that means I didn't like it because I don't put the books up there unless I'm never going to touch them. I did read it. I There's a difference between like a bad book and a book that you didn't like. And I that was just a book I didn't like. It's not that the book itself was bad. But there are some books that are just bad. Like the book overall is just bad. And I wouldn't classify that one that way. Just like, there are a lot of books like that. I didn't like the Midnight Library. A lot of people, you know, were really jazzed over that one. I didn't like the one about the person who, oh, I don't want to spoil it. The Adeline book, what was it called? Not Haunting Adeline, the other one, the one with the dead girl. Or was there a dead girl in that book? Or was it a dead guy? One of them had a 
devil? Whatever that one is. You know what I'm talking about. And anyway, I didn't think it was bad, but I didn't like it. I tried to read Flock and it wasn't good. Would not recommend. I also tried to read Flock and it wasn't good. Would not recommend. And I got pretty deep into it. And I stand by what I said. I couldn't handle it. It wasn't for me. Akatar is that way for me. Yeah. To be honest, I only went through Akatar because I knew a lot of people were talking about it. And just it gave me something to talk about. You know what I mean? Like, that was it. Yeah. The, I mean, the Midnight Library was... To me, it just really was glorifying the idea of killing yourself. And you're allowed to do whatever you want in a book. But for me, I was like, what was the, I didn't like how it was handled. I didn't like how it was done. Let me put it that way. And I don't even have, like, there's no one close to me that's been affected by suicide or anything like that. Um, Like, maybe that's not what I meant. I meant like, I have not been affected by anyone close to me in that way. And I still hated that book. And so I can only imagine someone that was and how they would feel about it. it literally, I can only imagine because I have no idea. Tender in the flesh. Tender is the flesh. You're right. It's weird. I don't I don't know how to feel about it. Just got American Psycho in the mail. Um, American Psycho is worse than Tender is the flesh, but better, but also harder to get through and way longer. And he's like, he's crazy. I mean, he's wild. But when you get to the end of it, you let me know what you think. You let me, you answer the question at the end of it. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you exclusively only read books with female authors? No. Riley, Sa I showed you Riley Sager today. I showed you uh, Nathan Hill. Uh, but yeah, generally speaking, oh, I was talking about Sylvan Raynard. He's a dude. I believe I'm like pretty sure. Um, I I don't mind male authors, but they don't tend to write what I want to read. That being said, some of my favorite memoirs and self help books have been written by men. I really like Trevor Noah's book. I really like Atomic Habits. It's one of my all time favorite books. It's a self help book, but it's like it has really good actionable steps. I'm a big fan of that book. Um, there's a lot of books. Back in the day, when Aziz Ansari came out with his book. You guys remember the romance book he came out with? That was good. That was a good time. I liked it. Oh, Chris Voss. Oh, Chris Voss. Never split the difference. One of the greatest books I have ever read. As far as like negotiating and like just being that girl. But he's a man and he like works for the CIA. Amazing. Jordan Peterson. I don't know what that means. I mean, I know who that is, but I don't know what that means. Are you ask me if I read his book? Does he have books? Hmm. My favorite book tropes? I don't even know. I just like anything well written. I'm ready for it. Get I give it to me. Give it to me. No. Oh yeah, Never Split the Difference is a really, really, really good book. I mean, I highly recommend it for it. Just get the audio the audio version if you want. But um it's it's just incredible. It's like how to negotiate but in your life it's not like how to negotiate like he's talking about hostage situations and stuff but he talks about your real life how to negotiate your rent your job your paycheck like it's really crazy I really want to go to his master class one day that'd be so cool <laughs> like that would be a really good time I would enjoy that quite a bit um the checklist manifesto I never heard of that one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, he has a master class. Um, I think um, we're coming to the end here. This was our very long Vlogmas Day 15. What time was it? 11.19? That's my birthday, 11.19. How apt. Um, do you plan on reading classics? I did. I have classics. I read Jane Eyre and uh, Scarlet Letter and uh pride and prejudice i didn't like pride and prejudice as much jane Eyre was my stuff man oh and uh the picture of dorian gray oh that book was so good you know i like reading those old books and like how to win friends and influence people and murmur mur, mur. i like reading them because they refer to each other and so now when someone refers to you know the picture of dorian gray 
I know what they're referring to. Like, I understand the jokes. Like, I get it now. And I like that. I like the layers and actually understanding the layers. So, yeah, Jane Eyre was amazing. And then I watched all the movies. And again, I think Jane Eyre is a book that like most people are probably these days not going to pick up and be like, wow, woo, <clears throat> it's giving, ah, like probably not. But like that book was just so incredibly written. It's so big. It's so good. Ugh, I love it. I wish she had written so many more books. Charlotte, girl. Who wrote Pride and Prejudice? Uh, Jane Austen. So who's the other Bronte sister? Oh, Emily. Yeah, I could not get through Emily's book. I could not get through Wuthering Heights. That one's tough for me. I might have to try again, but that one is tough for me. Uh, will this be saved? It should be. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing, but this should be saved. <laughs> Happy early birthday. Did you just tell me that? Like, my birthday was like three weeks ago. So. <laughs> Thank you. I'll remember that when my birthday rolls around again. Um, <laughs> I'm at like 11, 19, like November 19th is my birthday. <laughs> uh, November 15th. Nice, nice, nice. Would you consider sci-fi? Unfortunately, I do read sci-fi because my brother also gets to tell people what to read in our book club. And he always picks some freaking sci-fi book. And then I have to read it. And then I'm grumpy. And then he's like, Let's discuss it. And then I'm like, okay, fine. That's what I'm here for. I love this. I'm so happy we have a book club. Even though I have to read books I don't want to read. It's still a good time. I love it. YouTube quarterly book club. Very fun. I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, Wuthering Heights was hella boring. I'm sure some people really love it though. Oh, I do want to read some, uh, oh, dang, what's it called? I want to call him Orson Welles, but that's not it, is it? Who wrote 1984? Was that a dude named Orson Welles? Am I making that up? I don't know. It could be. One of you just said the word Orson, so. I didn't read The Martian. I didn't read Project Hail Mary. But I could see those being good for the book club. Is Lewis a reader? Yeah. He reads more than I do. And yeah, let me show you the book he reads. Except it's his version. It's Lewis's version. Mine is Taylor's version. Uh... Yeah, no, seriously. He literally reads more than me. But he reads the Bible, predominantly. He does read other stuff, though, occasionally. We did try to read a book together once, and it was a collective. And it was not very good. And then, I don't know. He's read some other books. I have some of his books on my shelf. But <laughs> Picture of Dorian Gray worth it? Yes! 100%. Pass it up for some horror? Oh, George Orwell. What did I say? Orson Welles. Who the hell's that? 100% pick up the picture of Dorian Gray. There is this scene in that book where the guy, I forgot his name. Whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Anyway, they're talking, and I say this scene all the time. Well, he talks about how this girl walks in, right? And he had dated this girl. And he essentially, he's like, how dare she? You know what I mean? How dare she continue to exist and live after we had the relationship that we had and she just gets to walk around and live. How embarrassing is this? And I'm like, period. Okay, I have felt that way many times. How dare you? You're just going to walk up in here and now I got to be embarrassed. Rude. But it was just the way, like, I think the author kind of hates women and, but it was so, it was so good. Like that book was so good. It was so funny. I loved it. I wasn't supposed to be, I don't know if it was supposed to be funny. I have no idea, but it was so good. It seriously was. Oh, I see. Will you be taking time off after Vlogmas? I don't have anything scheduled, <laughs> but you know, I'll probably go back to like my regular uploads or something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I am not entirely sure. Oh, I do have some traveling and stuff planned and coming up. So we'll see how that goes. Traveling tends to throw me off a little bit, uh, especially just because there's a lot of moving parts when I, I'm gone from the house, especially if I don't take everyone with me. Thick guanchas for life. Ooh, I cannot wait to show you the guancha vlog because I filmed it today and I wanted to put it up tomorrow, but I can't. So uh, it's probably going to go up Sunday. <clears throat> yes, I did remake the guanchas and I will not be sharing with you what went on with them. 
But suffice it to say, it's a wonderful vlog and I had a wonderful time doing it. <laughs> Citizen Kane, Orson Welles. Okay, that all checks out. That all checks out. Guys, the amount of books that I'm sitting around, like, who let this happen? <laughs> Go to our French toast. The old ones have officially gone. There's no French toast to be made. Those things were like little bricks, bro. Like, brick. We tried to eat them again today. It didn't turn out very well. Nobody liked it. It was not good. It was bad, in fact. I would go so far as to say, ew. <laughs> Uh, girl, we know you gotta clean up before bed. Check this out. The other day I was on, um, the internet and I saw someone make a recommendation to people saying, you know, if you wake up and you find yourself in a bad mood and you feel like, oh, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed and you're like moody Judy walking through your house, da, da, da. Maybe at night you should consider maybe cleaning up or helping yourself set up for the next day. And I was like you're not doing that? Do you know how horrid I would be in the morning if I woke up and I saw a mess in the kitchen, in the living room, there's crap on the floor? I literally would be the worst because I'm already just trying to wake up and get my life together. And I don't know what's on the agenda that day, but if it's a lot and I'm frustrated, I'm frustrated. And maybe we're running late or whatever. But man, doing every single thing at night, and having like a 99% chance that it's still going to look nice in the morning, that changes everything for me. I wouldn't even have thought to suggest that to someone because like, of course, to me, it's like a no brainer. Like it doesn't matter how late it is. It doesn't matter how late the party went. It doesn't matter if I got whatever, if I don't feel good or anything else, it does not matter. I am cleaning the whole house. It's going to happen because otherwise I literally cannot sleep and I'm going to wake up pissed like right now before I go to bed all of these books and everything else the, the everything everything is all askew like y'all can't really see it but um we're all cockeyed and crooked here you see how I'm like tilted <laughs> everything is the wrong direction it's because I wanted this in the background but uh yeah no it's all gotta get clean before and just do that for yourself because if you don't you're gonna be extra grumpy and it's like, you know, I'm going to wake up grumpy anyway, every single night. Exactly. I can, I literally can't sleep. I just simply cannot. What time do you usually sleep? Way before this. Way before this. I started going to sleep early because I have to wake up at like five something with the kids because their bus is so early. So I go to sleep really early. Uh, or I try to, I should say that. I try to. But show my cup. <laughs> this is my Grinchy cup. My cousin made it for me. She has a little boutique. Sophia Elena's Boutique, my little Grinchy Poo cup. Yeah, she made it for me and she gave it to me and I was like, oh my gosh, how adorable, I love it. You do it when you wake up, just before the babies wake up. Yeah, see, I just can't because like when I wake up, everyone's already awake. And I just, I can't, like I need quiet and peace in order to just uh, do all the things. But you know, to each their own, obviously. Have you made any new in-person friends? Nope. Well, sort of. I'm trying. There's a couple of bloggers. Not bloggers. Do we still call them bloggers? There's a couple of social media girlies. Sophia's boutique popping off again. Seriously, though. It was really cute. Yeah, man. I love it. I want this print. Have you guys seen those shirts where it's like, uh, they'll do like the girlfriend's name or like the pet's name. And then it'll just be pictures of them. But it's like kind of like a wrap tee, like the old school wrap tees. And I could not figure out how to do this print. I was in Pick Monkey. So maybe that was my problem. I don't know. But I was going to put pictures of myself and give it to Liz. But I scrapped that idea. I ended up getting him something else. I'd be your friend in person so hard. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't really have any in-person friends. Uh, are you still making sourdough? Yeah, no, but we have a bunch in the freezer. So I haven't made any lately. But I still have my mother. She's in my fridge. She'll be fed. She'll be, she'll be, she'll be back when she needs to be. <laughs> you ordered it from IG? Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I would only make it myself. Probably just because I know someone who prints shirts and I know how to design on my own, but I just couldn't, I couldn't nail the, I couldn't nail it. And nah. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, all right, guys. Well, I guess it's pretty late now, 1130. We should all be tie tie and we should all be going to sleep. And I like want to go and lay down and like I literally just want to surround myself. You know what I mean? I just want to surround myself with these books. I found an iPod plugged into a stereo dock. Ooh, just that one line ages this book. You found the iPod plugged into the stereo dock? Girl. What generation was it? <laughs> was it the Nano? <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> okay. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to try to save this. So I don't know how to do that, but I'm going to figure it out because uh, we're going to, we're, we're just going to girl boss this, as Nala says. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, did it have a click wheel for real? That little. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I don't even know how to end this. Give me a second. We're going to do that awkward. Okay, have a good... All right, you too. Okay, okay. All right, you know, I'll see you guys soon. All right, have a great weekend. Okay, bye. And then, like, it's not over yet because you clicked end stream. And now it says, do you want to end it? But now you have to click that button again. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've done this on Zoom. All right, I'm going to do it for real this time, though. Bye. <laughs>